rap shit. Sergeant Smack make it backflip. Telly Hank it with the action. With the vital speaking Spanish. Frank Matthews, how I vanish. Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut. Go BBS is on a beamer. When Fat Cat was tearing queens up. Ball off the prop and not the re up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus. Uptown like I'm Baby Main. Just caught a touchdown from the Bay. That's the same day Chris Walsberg used to play for the Hawks. Player background checks became the norm as teams sought to protect their huge investments. And not simply because of Len Bias, but others in the first round, including the player taken directly after Bias, Chris Washburn. Everyone knew what he could do on the court. Few suspected how unprepared he was for life. When he entered drug rehab, after only three months in the league, Washburn was perceived as a first-round bust. His second year, he was traded to Atlanta, where he says he found cocaine even more accessible. That's the same day I pistol with Chris Walburn. I jumped off the wall and slapped him with the gun. He was scoring out on crack then. I'm the one who used to sell him his crack. I was a young boy. You know, we do the history of that. I used to sell Chris Walburn is his, his drugs. Rassler, Lex Luger. I used to sell him his drugs. He used to come get drugs for me. Bobby Brown used to come take wood and get drugs. I saw Bobby Brown dope before and all that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I know I got, you know, I got two bro legs, you know. Everybody, you know, you killed a doll right now. Yeah, I got two bro legs. I got an open case, you know, I'm going to court for open case, for open gun case. Boom, uh, what else? I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Because since I had time, like, to sit back and just think, you know, I don't hate nobody. I don't, I don't hate Tip. I didn't write that letter to him to hate him. I'm just expressing I felt, you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, this for my nigga Big Ken and the gunner from Manhattan. The one that kept his mind should be kept me gun heavy. A true street nigga that's close to my fam. Just like the fingers on my right hand. He used to show big notice, so I nicknamed the Sam. But not the one with the big, but the one with the heat. You know the kind of when it sneeze and leak your blood in the street. Rip through your pubic hands and tie your ass. Chick, make me bring out the news, coming on the tape, the white sheet. That family's just been apart, close by next week. Dressing they son is best way for the preacher to speak. Are your mom screaming loud? Don't take my baby from me. Are you laying in the hospital with a tube in your arm? You know, everybody in Grand Hustle was saying that they had no idea. When the, when, the, when, the, when the news broke, everybody kind of took their hands off you, and they and you were painted as, you know, a word that is synonymous in this industry with talking which is snitch. snitch. So, you know, I want to find out exactly what am happened. I, I need to find am out. Am I snitching? Uh, am I snitching in the hood? <laughs> I'm, I'm just, okay. So, so that's like people say people just people say I can't go back in the hood, but you know, I heard I heard when I heard that I was in the hood. Okay. They say I couldn't go back to the hood, but I was in the hood when I heard I couldn't go back to the hood. Do no there's somebody that he know that I know. Came to me with something. They had something on me. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to hear him say on that what it is or who it was. But they put the pressure on me. And it wasn't the government. It wasn't nobody like that. They put the pressure on me to basically lie on this dude. Boom. It was up to me to either play the hand I was dealt or fold. If I, if I play the hand I dealt, I'm looking at 30, 40. You feel what I'm saying? If I fold, I mean I'm still in the game. So I put, I went ahead on and folded. Yeah. Well, you know what, man? I can't afford to really be associated with that. Right. That ain't in my best interest. Right. Either way it go, you know, it's kind of like they only thought about themselves. Never mind how it affects you. Never mind how I can fall back on you. It's all about me. So if that's the if that's the if that's the take on it, I have no choice but to separate myself, you know, just just due to what's best for me and mine. The, the news reports came out on um, the websites that you 
you were an undercover informant for the police, that, you know, uh, you possibly got tipped his attorney. Uh, that tipped his attorney? You, yeah, that you had got tipped his attorney. My, his, my money didn't long? His, hey, that's, that, I'm just, I'm just putting out what, what the word is, you know? But, I mean, for the first thing, let's go ahead and attack, let's attack that. What is I the think, I didn't get, I didn't, you? I didn't get tipped his attorney. Okay, so you didn't get tipped, you had nothing to do with that. Basically, I told y'all from the beginning when I first did the first interview with allhiphop.com, I ain't never snitched on nobody. I ain't no snitch. I don't work for the DEA and none of that. Mm. But I also said, I don't lie on me. You could arguably say that 2007 was one of T.I.'s best and worst years with October 13th, 2007 probably being one of the best and worst days of his life with him being nominated for nine Grammys and set to perform at the BET Awards only to be arrested by federal authorities on machine gun charges. What up though? It's Shades Popular. We back on my business. Y'all go ahead and meet us in Georgia with it. Y'all know we headed to the A. This a bankhead story. Y'all meet us in Techwood if you ain't scared. Now, though I'm going to tell you guys the story of one-time Grand Hustle Muscle turned Fallen Star. But if he was to turn his life into a movie, T.I. would be a co-star in that movie. So it's impossible to tell the story without referencing him. Now, Cedric Alpha Mega Zellers was signed with the Southern Hip Hop label two years prior in 2005, but it would be the working movements of the universe that would make everything implode just several years later. Now, in the day and age where we wake up and rappers get outed as rats and confidential informants and snitches every single day, back in 2007, that was the furthest thing from the case with the internet almost being in what I would call its infancy stages. Today, we wouldn't be surprised if they said the biggest rappers or the biggest rapper in the game was a rat as we have seen it before. But back then, just the thought of mentioning a rapper, any rapper, let alone a top rapper as a snitch would be asinine. And based on my research, though I'm sure Alpha Mega was not the first hip hop artist to cooperate with the authorities, but I'm definitely going to go out on a limb and say that he was the first hip hop artist to be outed as a snitch. Now, it's said that Alpha Mega's music career would begin in USP Atlanta while he was serving time for a gun case that he had caught in the late 1990s. A case in which the snitch allegations would come back to haunt him eventually. Now, before being arrested on that gun case, Alpha Mega was said to be a force in Atlanta, specifically Techwood Homes that was located in the Bankhead section of the city. Now, people like Young LA that spent time with the label would speak on it, and it's even videos online that would talk about and depict some of the antics from Alpha Mega or Tech was said, which a lot of people referenced him as. Now, if any of y'all ever been to or know anything about Techwood, now I was trying to compile a list of the 10 most notorious housing projects ever. And it would be almost impossible to argue that Techwood does not belong on that list. The housing projects would be demolished in 1996 with Atlanta's sweep of the city with the up and coming Summer Olympics of that year. And it said that some of the carnage that would go on in that housing projects, Alpha Mega would find himself a part of it. And amongst doing his dirt, which really seemed like Jack boy shit slash D boy shit, he would go on to make a name and gain a reputation for himself around the city of Atlanta. And though upon his release in 2002, he would cross paths with Beanie Siegel due to a relationship that he would have with the rapper's mother and his younger sister. He would eventually be offered a record deal by the Rockefeller artist, but he would turn it down for undisclosed reasons. While continuing to grind his music, 
About six months later, he would land a feature from Mississippi artist and producer David Banner on a song titled Motherfucker that would lead him inking a deal with Universal Records that very same year. In 2003, he would record songs with the likes of Jody Breeze, Little John, Slim Thug, Trina, as well as others. But in 2004, he would be released from that record deal with Universal Records, which would lead to him signing and eventually becoming the muscle at Grand Hustle in 2005. With some people saying that he would work two roles for the label, artists and security. Now, T.I. would see his career seemingly take off after going in a stallmate in 2006 after he would star in the blockbuster film ATL, which, like I said earlier, would lead to 2007, which could be considered the artist's best in his worst year. Now, if anybody was hit with what was going on in the city of Atlanta in 2007, it's really hard to think about that year without thinking about the bloody summer of 2007, where depending on who you talk to, there was a lot of rifts going on in the city. And some people would even say that would be the situation that led to T.I. trying to acquire machine guns, and silencers and different types of artillery for war. Now, 2009 would be a shaky year for the CEO of Grand Hustle, where even though he would serve time, a year and a day, he would somehow escape being crucified by the federal government for being in possession of those machine guns. So just getting off with his life and possibly able to keep his career you would have to think that everything was highly sensitive over at Grand Hustle Records. So it would be a huge deal in May of 2009, just a few months after Tip had been sentenced in the gun possession case when one of the newest artists in the self-proclaimed muscle at Grand Hustle, Alpha Mega, would be outed as a confidential informant by the website Smoking Gun, with media outlets like MTV picking it up, publishing articles titled T.I. Associate Alpha Mega was a DEA informant. Now, I couldn't really nail down this time frame, but it seemed like a matter of days before Tip would find himself in New York in an interview with DJ Envy when he would ask him about the situation and he would publicly drop Alpha Mega from the label. And to make matters even worse, Alpha Mega would hear about his banishment from the label while sitting in a Georgia jail cell, arrested just several days before that, on April 29th, 2009, on a felony gun and obstruction charge, where according to the Atlanta Police Department, while performing a traffic stop on the SUV that Alpha Mega had been driving, they will find a stolen 40 caliber pistol going on to say that the firearm was loaded with a round in the chamber. Authorities would allege that once they discovered the weapon, Alpha Mega would become combative and non-compliant. An officer by the name of Antonio Blasini would describe a situation to where he would pepper spray Alpha Omega, but the pepper spray would have no immediate effect police would continue to chase him to a nearby parking garage where he would repeatedly be struck in with a police baton, again to no effect. Now, in a final effort to escape, they would say that he would weave through several parked cars and climb over a parking garage wall, jumping between 25 and 30 feet to the ground, which would lead to Alpha Mega suffering two broken legs before he was eventually arrested on that felony gun charge. Now, doing research on this situation had me trying to find out what he had going on now, but it's just almost like the Double XL would say in an article about him. It's like Alpha Mega kind of just upped and disappeared. Now, the smoking gun did say at the time of his gun case that if convicted, he could potentially spend up to 10 years in prison. Now, with the circumstances surrounding the arrest, and him trying to flee the officers, it's hard for me to see a situation to where he wasn't convicted 
with that gun that he was traveling in that SUV with. As we all know, possession is nine tenths of the law, nigga. A lot of times ten. But it's also hard for me to see a situation to where if he's not serving time. Now, y'all make sure y'all hit the red bell and subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. Y'all get in the comment box and y'all let me know if y'all remember this time in the city. Y'all let me know if y'all ever even heard of Alpha Mega. Now, he would reach the highlights of his career with songs like Uh-Oh with Tip and even perform alongside Busta Rhymes. But he had a very, very short-lived career. And like I said earlier, probably going to go out as arguably the first rapper to be outed as a confidential informant in a day and age where that shit happens every day. Y'all definitely make sure y'all let me know where we need to head to next, what we got wrong, what gangsters I need to cover, all of that. Y'all tapping with me directly on Instagram, Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. Until the next time, y'all know the rundown. Salute the almighty mob.